how we use films to actually start to reach people and, and, and start them to ask questions on their journey towards Christ is really important. And so I see films like this being, you know, a little spark. You know, the cross is in this film, but it's very subtle. Well, welcome fans of Against the Tide Media. We have a special treat today. We'll be talking to Stuart Lachlan Bennett, who is a filmmaker. He's going to tell us about an exciting project that he's in the midst of right now and about his past, extensive past in film. So, Stuart, thank you so much for meeting with us today. We greatly appreciate it. Yeah, it's great to be here. Okay, so right out of the gate, you started at the BBC, correct? And one of my, one, right, of my yeah. one of my favorite movies of all time is Shadowlands. Uh, Norman Stone directed it in, I believe, 1985. It was released. <laughs> oh, that's funny. No, Norman is a very, very good friend. Uh, we went to the, we st- both studied film at Leeds University. And uh, yeah, he's, uh, he and I are very good buddies. I've stayed at his house many, many times in Scotland. And, you know, my family have lived in Scotland for a number of years too. So yeah. <laughs> yes, in oh, fact, I, I, I've helped I, with some distribution of some of some of his work. <laughs> that was actually the film that was a huge part of my conversion to Christianity. Well, really, well, with with Joss Ackland, who I think was fantastic as Lewis. Yes, I yeah. saw it and I thought, if this guy, this C.S. Lewis guy, um, with his level of intelligence, could believe this Christianity thing. I needed to take a different look at it. And I read Mere Christianity soon after that. Anyway, the interview is not about me. It's about you. So I want, I want to hear from you. Tell us about your, your extensive past in filmmaking, the high points, how you got into it. And again, I just yeah. feel free to, to explore the BBC again and tell us kind of how it all came together. Yeah, well, for me, it was, uh, you know, working in the BBC film unit was a dream, you know, for filmmakers in the UK. It's, you know, that's like Hollywood over here. (laughs) Really, it is, you know, making making films specifically for television back then. And so everything that we were working on was shot on film. And so my background was actually as a film editor. So I went through the BBC television film school uh, in Ealing Studios in London. And then worked in television center, working on all kinds of things, documentaries, drama, and so on. And so um, over the past uh, just a few years, um, actually made to be an editor, which was which was wonderful. And so working in Ailing Film Series, I used to pass all kinds of uh uh, dressing rooms and so on, and so it was. It was a great atmosphere. It wasn't. It wasn't unusual to, you know, to be in the BBC canteen and just seeing people dressed in all kinds of weird stuff. And so, yeah, it was. But uh, but it was. It was some of the best training in the world, you know. And so that has stayed with me. And of course, some of the ways that I look at making films that has that kind of background, and particularly in my documentary work, which we could talk about later. So next question is simple as this. Uh, You have a new project that you're working on called The Warehouse, and it looks really intriguing. I love the quote we were talking earlier, the quote basically where you bring up C.S. Lewis, uh, you bring up um, the screw tape letters. And Mm -hmm. I want to hear that connection from your point of view, because I'm sure that you know Lewis well. Well, you know, I for me, uh, Screw Tape Letters was, you know, was a book that I read probably when I was in college, university, and uh, it had a great impact because it's like, oh my goodness, this is a real insight into the human mind and soul, and just how you know demonic or you know um, presence or you know we talk about temptation and it's like okay so what's really happening and so it, it's kind of in screw tape it's kind of a jovial look at that of how you know you have this power whispering in the ear <laughs> kind of thing um but but this film the warehouse i would also kind of 
likened to this present darkness or something. So this is a film about the spiritual world. It's different. This is, you know, I think a lot of Christians are used to very overt type of films. And so this is a look at how to develop a film that's going to cause people to think, but also certainly create an awareness of uh, of the spiritual world. So there's a lot in it for Christians and also for a general audience. It's refreshing to hear of these film projects. There's another one that we've been discussing lately, which I won't go into right now, where, like you said, they're not overtly Christian. And really the goal of it is to get people to consider these things. What you said was just spot on. I mean, really, what is yeah, you know, I, I, I've worked on uh, films. I actually directed the very first evangelistic film, uh, narrative film in the Turkish language. So this was in the ni- early 1980s, and that has now been dubbed into about 20 different languages. But, you know, back then, there were only about 30 or 40 known Christians in Turkey. And there was one young man who was in the acting profession, and we kind of he was the main character, but it was, and it was a story about sacrifice of the young Christian guy giving his life for his enemy. And so, and that was a 60 minute drama and it's been seen all over the world. And so, so I've done very overt things. A lot of them have actually been in a, in an international context, of, you know, so I worked in many countries over the years. So I, I've worked on those kind of projects, but one of the things I think we find ourselves in uh, Western society today with with where we are, and it's a shame that we've had to ask the question, is the church relevant? <laughs> you know, how do we be relevant? And so much is revolving around beauty and how people make decisions today, not necessarily based on truth, but based on beauty. And it's, that's come from consumerism and so on. And so how we use films to actually start to reach people and, and and start them to ask questions on their journey towards Christ is really important. And so I see films like this being, you know, a little spark. You know, the cross is in this film, but it's very subtle. You know, it's, it's just, it's a symbol, it's a metaphor, but it's a metaphor for what's inside and the power to change. And so it's there if you look for it, but it doesn't have to be, it's not a preachy film. <laughs> well said. And you know what? When I hear about films like this, I immediately want to see them because sometimes, I've mentioned this before, if we go to C.S. Lewis, he said you have to steal past those watchful dragons. And I think it's so true when it's just spot on, right on the nose. A lot of times the audience feels an agenda and they feel like maybe there's almost like trickery that's going to be in the narrative where Mm -hmm. if you cloak it and you bring it in so subtle, like you said, then they don't know that they're being informed in those areas. And I think that's the beauty of a project like The Warehouse. What else can you tell us about The Warehouse specifically? What would you like to... And I do want to talk about uh, supporting it. That's something really important. We'll do that. But can you tell us specifically about the... Well, I mean, one of the fun things is that there's an undercover angel (laughs) who, who is there to try to help to save people, you know, to, to bring them. So, so the warehouse is, I, I don't know, you could say it's a metaphor for where we are in, or different people are in terms of um, their position before God. And, and, and so evil has managed to capture them and lock them up. And the only way they can get out is by realizing, you know, that they, they have to change. And so that's that's kind of the underlying message, and yet the cross is very subtly in there. Mm-hmm. And but you have an undercover angel, and so one of the things that that says to me, and I think what we often forget as Christians too, is that we're kind of consumed with preaching the gospel, which is wonderful. We're commissioned to do that, but the Holy Spirit is at work in the world, and I think too often we try to do the job of the Holy Spirit. One of the things too is unless people are searching. Unless people are asking the right questions, then we don't really have a great place to connect. And so I think films like this can can be used in, in terms of helping people on that journey. 
And so I see this as a stepping stone. I, I but, but it's, it's very, see, I lived in Thailand. I, you know, my wife and I were missionaries in Thailand doing this. I started a production company in Thailand to reach people and, and um, a nonprofit to uh, um, also, we, you know, we were doing free medical clinics and all kinds of stuff. But in, in Thailand, we found out that less than 1% of people know that Jesus is the son of God. So where do you start with the gospel? <laughs> you know? And so you have to start, you have to go back. There is a God who loves you. And so unless people connect the dots, then we really, we're speaking a foreign language. And that was definitely the case in Thailand. And I really think that in our contemporary Western society, we do have the same problem. And so I see films as being a tool where people are looking for things to watch. They're looking for um, also searching for answers. That, that we've got to give them things that are going to lead them in the right direction. Well, let's go back to, um, is it called Operation Blessing, Thailand? You're not? Yes, yeah. Okay, yeah. when did you start that? That's been some time. Right? That, was, that was 1998. I used to work for Pitching Broadcasting Network in Virginia Beach, and I was with them for 25 years and actually producing and directing uh, all over the world and um, supervising productions. So so worked in lots of different countries, but uh, lived in the Philippines and then in Thailand um, managing different productions and then actually starting a production company actually in Thailand, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So speaking of the warehouse, um, mm. how could one donate? How could one be involved in this? I know that you're in a season. Yes. Yeah. So we start production in a couple of weeks and we're, it's, we're getting very close to, to kick off. So, you know, we've been working on this actually for about the last three or four months, maybe longer. And, um, so what we do is we, we hire key positions. So, so all the key positions like sound supervisor, assistant director, of course, myself and, uh, the director, uh, we're all professionals. And then we also bring on students or recent uh, film school graduates to work with us as well. And so this is as much an educational project for them. These are Christians who are passionate about film, who've been through film school and are going into the world. And so we're giving them the opportunity to work on something professional and to actually, you know, boost their resume. And so that's part of why we're fundraising too, because we want to make this the best experience that they can possibly have. And so, yeah, we're trying to raise another $40,000. We already have 60000 So we're hoping we can boost that to cover a lot of things. There's, you know, we uh, right now for editorial, for music, you know, we need to hire some vehicles. I mean, there are various things. Um, we don't have enough money to hire somebody right now for hair and makeup through the whole thing and various things like that. So, so, we, <laughs> so we need some additional funding. Yeah. Well, what an amazing experience for the students. You know, it'd yeah. be kind of interesting, this is just merely a suggestion, but to do a documentary while you're filming, just of the, well, we, the students have. You've probably thought of that, but I just wanted to bring We, we actually have a whole team that's going to shoot behind the scenes, and so we will be posting, you know, uh, snippets as we as we get into production and get going. So, yes, yeah, so, so people who are supporting will be able to see that. So we'll be sharing all of those experiences uh, with them. And, you know, people who donate, you know, they can um, get a, uh, depending on the level they donate, they can get a, a copy of this uh, shooting schedule. Can uh, I'm, And I'm looking forward to some actually talking to me on location, doing virtual visits on location. And even for some, depending, again, on the level of, of support, coming and visiting, but anybody who donates will have their name in the credits with a thank you. So, yeah, so we have different levels. So they can go to the uh, Give Lively site, which I'm sure will be on the end of the video. Then then we can, uh, we can arrange all of that and really looking forward to meeting some of the donors. Yeah, we will definitely, uh, at the end of this interview or wherever Noah decides to place, information we'll make sure that mm. the fans that watch this because we have quite a few fans now which is really nice um mm. we'll be able to follow up and become part of 
I mean, I just recently was involved in a donation for a film and it's kind of a, it's an amazing experience to be involved in something that you fully believe in. You feel like you're part of the community of it. You're part of bringing yes. support. Yeah. And yeah. I think that that's a really powerful way uh, for filmmaking, you know, to happen. And you know this much better than, than I do, but it's such almost like an enchanted world to bring a film actually together, you know, to oh my fruition, from conception overall. I mean, I'm excited about this from what I know about it. Uh, it just sounds like, it sounds like it, it's timely. And I think the films like this are so needed um, mm. for so many reasons that you've already discussed. One of them purely for me is, is uh, for people to look at spiritual truths from a different vantage point and see it in a different way. I, I think that's the best thing you can do right now. There are plenty of films uh, directly about Jesus, like The Chosen right now is amazing as far yeah. as the historical yeah. aspect of Jesus of Nazareth. But these fantastic representations, I think, are just so needed. I love the screw tape letters. I'm sure I'm going to like the warehouse because, and you have, like you said, you have a, an undercover angel, which to me, just, that's just <laughs> yes. a brilliant yeah. idea. Yeah. Is there some, just when you said it, I thought, oh, you could do so much with that. <laughs> and, and, it's not, and it's not obvious, you know, and it's deliberately not obvious. And so it's like, wait a minute. And so people are going to be watching the film saying, well, didn't he say there was an undercover angel? angel? It's like, yeah, well, just wait. <laughs> so, yes. right. Well, um, I want to end on this note. We always do this with uh, Against the Tide Media. We always allow our guests. And again, thank you so much for, for dropping by today. It was a pleasure to meet you. We, it, Against the Tide Media only wishes you the best with this film venture. I think you're going to have a great time. I think it's going to be an amazing film. But we always allow our guests to have the last word. What would you like to say to people looking into the, the warehouse as far as supporting it, praying for it? following it? I mean, do you have any last words? Yes, yeah, sure. Well, you know, it takes a village to make a film. So it's not just me. Uh, you know, my uh, director that I'm working with, uh, Darren Wales, is a fantastic guy. Lots of experience. I mean, probably 30 plus years in filmmaking. Our DP, uh, the same. He's shot several feature films. Uh, and we are, by the way, we are shooting on the red cameras. And so these are the same cameras that many features have been shot on. So this is going to look really, really good. So, so if you're in, you know, if you're donating to the film, you're donating to something that's going to be really quality. And so that's something that we're proud of. And so, um, but again, you know, this is an experience for students who are, Christians who are passionate about going into the world and making a difference in their filmmaking careers. And this is a launch pad for that. So you're not just giving to a film that can actually make a difference uh, in people's lives, but you're also investing in the future of Christian filmmakers, which I think is fantastic. And it's very different probably from anything else maybe that you've supported in the past. So if you can help, we would really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, there you go. Thank you so much. Listen, Against the Type Media fans, it's a great privilege to have another interview for you to look over. Please support this film. Look into it. Back it. Because we need films like this. They're important. Stuart, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, greatly appreciate it. and was nice meeting you. I hope to keep in touch with you. It's one of the yeah. great things about what I get to do as far as an interview host. I've met so many amazing people that are in the entertainment industry from you know, people that are in production to people that are, in, you know, in front of the camera. It's just nice to have that connection. So thank you very much and uh, the best to you. Thank you. My pleasure. Yeah. And we're out. Hey everyone, it's Noah Bennett, founder of Against the Tide Media. I just found out about a new project called The Warehouse. I believe this film has the power to impact lives in the same ways as The Chosen, The Shift. And not only that, but the message of the story can reach a really wide audience 
and help pique their curiosity, eventually leading them towards their ultimate source of love. This is a film that I believe in, and a film that I would love to see you join me in supporting, and how you can do that, please visit the link in the description, or text WAREHOUSE to 44321. Your donation is 100% tax deductible and each donor will receive a thank you in the credits. Certain donation levels will let you visit the set either virtually or in person. In fact, some of us here at Against the Tide Media will be on set during the shoot. And we'd love to see you here in Virginia. Keep watching Against the Tide Media for interviews and other content about The Chosen, The Warehouse, The Shift, and so many more projects. And remember to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell. Thank you again. Definitely. Yeah. And we should be up and recording. Again, I appreciate your time. So what I'm going to do is we have like this little, this little uh, opening sequence for um, Against the Tide Media. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just do like a little intro and then we're going to dive in and just follow, just follow the questions, obviously. But the main thing we Absolutely. want to talk about first yeah. and foremost is your background in film. Because I think That's it's fine. fascinating. You've been doing this a long time. I've got questions well, about the BBC for you. So we'll just dive well, in. Yeah, 40 years plus. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see here. Um, I'm going to go to speaker view. Get going on this. Noah, you know what to do. You're going to be, you're going to be uh, making everything look perfect like you always do. Um, all right. So I'm trying to figure out why it's not going back to speaker view, speaker view, speaker view. Incidentally, is the lighting behind? I just turned a lamp around. Is that too bright behind me or is it okay? It, look, it looks really good. I have issues okay. with my overhead lighting, so I'm trying to find this man. Yeah, and, that, and I do too. And that's why I turned a couple of lamps around. That's here, not so. bad. That's not bad. Um, okay, so let's just dive into this. Okay, Noah? Three, two, one. Particularly in my documentary work, which we could talk about later. I apologize for this. No, I'll we'll take this part That's out. Fine. Yeah. Going to happen some issues fine. with. Oh, sorry, Dad. There. Okay. I'm going to show you. Show you these. Oh yeah, there you go. Yep. <laughs> no one's <Yeah>. filled. <laughs> yeah, I've heard the one on the King James is uh, is awesome. I have not seen that. Yeah, I've seen, of yeah. course I've seen the, the second one in Arnie and, and Norman Scott. Now he has the most reluctant convert that's coming out with Max McLean. Yeah, and that looks yeah. dynamite. But anyway, back to you. Um, so next question is simple as this: uh, from conception, you as a one of you're one of the screenwriters, correct? And you're a producer? No, no, actually I'm I'm not a not screenwriter, no. Oh, okay. No. okay. Um but anyway. Thank you very much and uh the best to you. Thank you. My pleasure. Yeah. And we're out. So uh what I'm gonna do is uh I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna keep recording the right now. I'm gonna save this. Do you, mm -hmm. How do you feel about the interview? Did we hit? Oh, great. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I just let, basically, I let you go. You're articulate. You know what you're talking about. Like I said, people really, people have seen me enough. They haven't seen you. They need to see you. Mm -hmm. So we try and use this view where I get, you start talking and it's full screen. It's you. It's not, I'm not just sitting there going, you know, and so <laughs> I hope, I hope, I hope, uh, I hope it worked out well for you. I thought it, I thought it came along really nice. So I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, I, I enjoyed it and I, th I think it's fine. So I think, you know, Noah can do what, it, you know, if um, he can work he's some gonna, magic too. He is. He's so good at this. I mean, he, that yeah. guy, he's amazing. He's got all the, he's got some really high end uh, film editing stuff that he uses, but right. we will make sure that it looks, you know, it looks well and any of my stumbles and stuff, He'll, he's pretty seamless. He'll go in and just right. get rid of it. And so, but anyway, it was nice talking with you. Um, it was great to meet you. Yeah, it. and it's the, the whole Norman Stone thing. It's kind of, it's like, really? Wow. Okay. That was, that blew me away. <laughs> it's interesting. I have just small world. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, I know you're a very, very busy man right now. Jenna made it crystal clear that, you know, that you're a busy person. And I do apologize for the little hiccup, but hey, thanks. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, no problem. No problem. We got it. So I'm going to end this. Thanks again. If you have any questions, right, well, feel free to call yeah. Jenna or Noah or me. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure I always look up. I did a whole interview. Just one last thing. You'll, you'll get a kick out of this. Early on, we were pretty we were pretty green at what we were doing. I mean, even the mechanisms we were using Skype originally. Mm. I think Zoom is just superior to Skype. It is. And we're trying to do all these different things. And I did a whole interview with an actor from The Chosen. His name's Nick Shakur. He plays Zebedee. And it was beautiful. And I looked up and the recording button wasn't in the corner. I never pressed record. And I go, <laughs> I go, Nick, what are you doing this afternoon? And he's like, <laughs> Because oh, we really, no. we become really good yeah. friends, and I think that that was one of the catalysts. He turned right around. We did it again, and maybe it'll be radically different, but still good. It was better. It was better the second time, and I was so. I mean, I was so happy. I thanked him again. again. So now, that's, that's a blessing. <laughs> main thing I do now is I make sure I'm constantly kind of when I'm off screen and you're full screen, I'm looking to see that recording, and it's it's up and running right now. <laughs> But anyway, take care. (laughs) And again, it was so pleasure to meet you. And I hope you have a great day. You too. God bless. Great to meet you. God bless to you.